Hey, welcome to another SV Links video. I've been looking over something that Marianne was working on last week, and it turns out our girl has a little bit of too much junk in the trunk. Hey, so... now, that is not the proper way to be talking about our boat. Maybe I should be handling this. All right, well, let me turn this over to the Admiral. She was working on it anyway. Thank you. The issue we had to deal with on our Solitaire 1520 is weight distribution. Robert Quinn brought this to our attention because one of the things that Shoning does for customers is help you plan your weight distribution on your cat. They want their boats to sail well, so they want to make sure you set things up properly for good performance. A while back, they asked us to supply a list of all the major equipment that would be on the boat and how much each piece weighs. They also wanted to know where we were thinking of locating those items. So we sent Shoning a spreadsheet list and in a recent online meeting, we went over all of the various items we were putting on SV Links. Upon reviewing that information, they discovered that we were planning to put too much weight toward the stern of the boat and we were also a little off balance from port to starboard. During the meeting, we discussed which items could be moved and which had to remain in their original location to see if we could get SV links balanced out or if we had to do something more drastic. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet of information we sent to Shoning. As you can see, this is a list of the major equipment items we're adding, how much they weigh in both kilograms and pounds, and a general idea of where we plan to put them on the boat. If an item is marked central or both, we don't worry about them, but if they're marked either central and another location like starboard central, then we have to add part of that weight to that location. For example, starboard central, we add two thirds of that weight to the starboard side. Now over on the side of the spreadsheet, we listed totals for the weight with the category of far, meaning all the way out to port, starboard, bow, or stern. The column marked central is referring to those items that were only counting two-thirds of their weight added to the far locations, things that are not quite centered, but are towards one of the far reaches of the boat, like these locations. Once we totaled up the weight on the port, starboard, bow, and stern, we discovered that Shoning was right. We had too much weight to the stern and port. The delta between the bow and the stern came out to 1,562 pounds heavier on the stern than the bow and 894 pounds heavier on the port than the starboard side. This means that our cat would be low in the water on the stern and listing to the port. That will not do. Here's what we changed. The items marked in green are what we moved and to where. By far the heaviest items we moved were the 600 pounds of lithium batteries, which we moved from under the stern port bunk to under the forward starboard bunk. But we also shifted the water makers from starboard to port and the spare anchor and chain road to the bow. And finally, we moved the Victron equipment like the inverters and the isolator toward the bow central. Here is the end result. The delta between the stern and bow is now only 257 pounds, with the bow being the heavier side. This is fine since the diesel fuel tanks are located bow central and they will not be full most of the time, which will drop that 250 pounds and balance us out. As for port to starboard, we're now only 66 pounds heavier on the starboard side, which is negligible. That means we were able to balance out our girl without doing anything major, and now she'll sit nicely in the water, and it should allow her to kick up her heels and give us good performance while sailing. 
Now, I'll turn things over to Phil at the build site, where things are progressing on the building of the boat, although we did run into a major disaster later in the week, as you'll see when Phil gets to Thursday. But I'll let him tell you what happened. So today, instead of running off to the lot, although we were there earlier this morning fixing up a few things and picking up some materials, but we're at my garage where the saws and such are because we're preparing our four beam and we have to cut all the wood strip planks because as you can see, we use these 45 millimeter by 12 millimeter, uh, about, oh, and I'm switching to feet on you, but uh, they're about five feet or so long. And we have to put a angle joint on these that will epoxy up and turn these things into about 22 foot long pieces that we can bend over the form. And uh, so we have to get these cut at a perfect 45 so that they seam together and, uh, and end pieces and all that stuff. So we're here cutting all these right now and then we'll start epoxying them together and creating those long strips that we need to create the form. So we'll show you more about that tomorrow, but uh, right now we're going to cut some more of these pieces of wood. And now to epoxy these angle joints together, we need to create a little jig so that we can sandwich them and hold them in perfect place. So we're just going to create a jig and get to work on that. So we finished up the jig and let me show you what that looks like. So basically the slats lay down in here and they have their angled section across here. And then we'll put this top piece on and tighten it down on there so that they can set up eight of these at a time. And there are about eight slats per side of the four beam and they each have five sections so that means there's three glue spots so that's how many of these we'll do we'll do them in groups of eight and then we'll just slide them down to the next one and let them set up and while they're setting up we're not going to sit here and wait for the epoxy to dry instead what we're going to do is head over to the build site and do some work on the bow uh, nose of the boat right now because we are into still slight showers outside today so tomorrow is the is another day of slight showers and then Thursday is the big rain day. So we're going to work on some things here in the garage and but while we're setting up these the slats with their epoxy uh, we'll work on that nose piece for the front of the hull and get that all cut up and, and working. So we're going to do, do some measurements over there a little later uh, but we're going to set up one set of these right now so that they can start drying and curing and then we'll get back to another one later on. Here they are ready to be epoxied on and we're just going to mix up the epoxy right now and then we'll get these pushed together, put the top on and let them dry. Good day everyone, it's Tuesday. Yesterday we had just a little bit of shower so we covered everything up but uh, it's nice and sunny this afternoon on Tuesday so we're here to epoxy on a few more strips. We spent the morning working on the wood slats for the four beam in the garage. But today, this afternoon, we're gonna get some more epoxying done over here. And so we're getting back towards the front here. So this one's gonna come in right here and it goes pretty much all the way to the back there. So we're getting down to the last few here. We can do two more, but then we're gonna to have to sort of fix up the front of the boat and finish that up because it's not quite right. And uh, we're trying to fix that but the um, plans for it and such are uh, not very, very detailed on this. And so we're having to do a lot of work in fabrication to make a piece of foam for the front so that we can epoxy fiberglass onto it to get the shape correct for the front. So we're gonna work on that a little bit after we get a couple of planks in here today. So that's the goal for today. So we're doing a lot better here. This is the latest piece that we just put on. So a lot less excess, so getting better at doing these. It's Wednesday and 
we're busy getting the rest of these on now. Uh, we have a break in the sort of uh, showers. It hasn't been too bad. Uh, there was a couple showers on Monday. Uh, Tuesday we thought there would be, but there weren't any, so we got some work done there. This morning we did some more work in the garage, and uh, now we're back here epoxying down to the last few slats here, and we'll get those done today. And then Thursday, tomorrow is when the rain's really supposed to hit. But for today, we'll get the rest of this side of the porthole done. And then on Friday, we'll start stripping off the other side and start epoxying those on and get this thing done. Finally, number 25. That means this side of the porthole is done. That's 25% of the way, all epoxy, of course. We'll start on the other side on Friday, but today we're going to get the last plank on this side finished. Here we are cleaning off the excess along the outside and underneath, as well as putting some clamps on to make sure that it is at the right spacing uh, with the plank above. Oh, some of you were concerned about rain and the MDF. But as you can see, we just covered it for tomorrow's rain. And so all the MDF is under plastic, so it's not going to have any issues. It's only going to rain tomorrow. And then Friday will be back here and uncover it and get to work again. So that's it. Ready for rain. That'll do it for the day or two if we might get rain. And uh, there might be a little bit, a 50% chance on this coming Thursday. So we'll just cover it all. No big deal. Well, good morning. It's a gray day, and uh, it's a gray day in more than just weather. The thing is, is that some of my viewers and in their comments uh, were worried about the shade structure that we put up. And what they were worried about is that when we got into high winds, that it was going to uh, take off like a sail, and that I need to stake it down better and all those kinds of things. They weren't wrong, but that's not what the problem turned out to be. The problem turned out to be the weird weather this year in Southern California. And what happened is on Thursday night, in the middle of the night, instead of just a light rain like predicted, a huge downpour crashed down on us. And the canopies up there couldn't deal with the water coming down at that rate and it just got so heavy that it just bent all of the various uh, struts. And the whole thing basically came down. So we had a massive disaster on Thursday. Now, this isn't our rain cover, never was. This was just for shade. And so we're gonna have to take it all down and in the future here, we're gonna have to work out a different way of getting shade up when we get to the sunny days. But the boat itself was under wraps so as was the mdf for the four beam so they took no damage in any of this but the canopy shade canopy is totaled so uh, this is what is left of it over here and as you can see it's a colossal mess now we already took down the tarps and uh, we'll use those in the future here when we reset up some shade uh, but uh, this thing's a total loss, so we're going to take it down today and then we'll get back to work on the boat tomorrow. Now let's talk a little bit about why we screwed up. The thing is, is that we're trying to build it tall enough so that when the whole boat is sitting there, it was above the boat and give us shade while we work on the boat. The problem with that is that meant we had to hoist the center of this thing 26 feet in the air to begin with and did that so we would have room for the boat, but we had to put the tarps on it before we raised it because there was no way for us to get up there to reach those tarps. And that was our big mistake because when we saw this rain coming, although we didn't expect the torrential rain that came down, what's that song? It never rains in California, but it pours. Well, we didn't expect that torrential rain that was gonna come down, but we didn't have any way of reaching up and taking down the tarps because they're 26 feet in the air and we just didn't have a ladder that tall. And we didn't think the rain was going to be that strong or we might have gone and rented one or something, but we just thought it was going to be a gentle rain and we've handled that already, so we didn't think any big deal of it. But when that torrential rain came and that tarp was up there, it just thousands of pounds of water tore it down. And 
again, that problem was the fact that this thing was so high. And we're just going to have to deal with the fact that uh, that didn't work out. And what we'd hoped is that the rain, which is normally pretty much over by this time, be good for, you know, no rain in Southern California typically from now till September. So we had months to get the boat structure up and then we could reach that thing from the boat, but obviously that didn't work out. So now we'll have to do something else. So we're busy taking down more of the structure right now. It was an entire day and a forklift to put that thing up and about two and a half hours to take it all down. So we have the bent up structure down. So that's all we're going to accomplish today because uh, tomorrow, today's demo day, and tomorrow we're going to start building in the new shade cover over the hull so that we can get back to work on getting that hull finished up. We don't want to delay things by much, so we're hoping this is only going to cost us a day or two. So, not, you know, a horrible thing. It sure seemed that way on Thursday when we looked at it, but we'll get it done and get back onto the boat quickly. So, go figure, the tarps held through all that weight of water and bent the metal. That's some tough tarps. So what we're doing right now is we just laid them out to get them all dried out. And what we're planning on doing now is attaching along the top of the shipping containers and taking them over here where we're going to sink poles in and draft those down to the ground with stakes and get shade over the hull and uh, over the work table here. Because for the next, oh, three to four months, all the work's going to be done right there. And so if we can get shade over the work area for the next few months, once those are done, we'll deal with what we want to reconfigure for some other work. For example, when we do the cabin top, we're going to build it right here and we'll bring shade off the top of that container and shade it while we work on that. So we'll move the shade around as we go. But what we want to do is make it so now that these aren't so tall that we can't detach the tarps and just against the shipping container if it's going to be windy or if there's some out of season rain, thunderstorm or something. So we want to make them easy to detach this time and just put them over because it's not the boat we're worried about in the rain or certainly not in the wind. It's the tarps and such. So that's what we're doing today. And uh, next thing we're going to be doing, we're cutting up the old poles so we can reuse them all. And we're going to start embedding them into the ground and putting in some stakes and straps and all that kind of stuff. These are the worst of the bent ones, so we're going to put those aside for now and then we're going to go and cut some other ones that we can actually use. So what we're doing right now is uh, salvaging the ones that are uh, not too bent to be used. So and we're cutting them to the lengths we need, so if there's a little bent part out on the end, we're lopping that off. So we're no longer boat builders today, we're ditch diggers. Um, well, hole diggers at least. So we're putting a bunch of poles in here, sinking these cement filled buckets into those holes. We're going to tie lines down to stakes behind them to strengthen them up. And uh, those will be the supports on this side for the tarps that are gonna go across to the far shipping container over there. So this is the last hole we have to dig. We've already got all the other ones in. One more to go. So these are the poles that we were able to salvage for our newly designed shade structure. So we have the, um, some of our support uh, structures in and then Monday we will get uh, the tarps put up. Right, and, uh, but that's gonna do it for today. And we just wanna thank you all for watching the videos. And uh, yep. uh, you know, it was a, semi-depressing week for uh, a little bit there. Um, 
on Thursday and uh, Friday when we had to take down that structure. But uh, now that we've got this, uh, the supports up and all we have left is to get the tarps up then, uh, things are back on track and we've only wasted maybe a day and a half to two days uh, total uh, getting this shade thing fixed up. So again, thanks everybody for watching. We really appreciate your time. And yeah. also to our patrons, we have a new patron in there in the list. So they are helping support us and that is wonderful. So we really appreciate them. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. And then Monday, I promise we'll be <laughs> back to build in the boat because it shouldn't take us long to get the tarps up. And then we'll get on to the outboard side of the porthole and start getting that epoxied on. And maybe we'll even get to starting to strip plank on the four beam as well. So we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.